very important to understand. It's not about how you start. It's not about how you finish, but it's understanding that the finish is where everything starts. Hey, what's up, homies? Welcome back to another episode of Housekeeping with your boy Juice Jones Creates. Juice Jones or Juice Jones Creates? Who cares? The name is the name. So let's talk about Valentine's Day, heartbreak and mental health and education and everything that we've covered within the last two weeks of my absence. No, we're still rolling out content. So did a sit down with my friend Lynn, they, them pronouns, and they were telling me about the importance of education when it comes to child development and pronouns and their importance and the amount of kids that within their situation are going through a transition, thinking about a transition or dealing with a lot of adult situations because the kids are having the conversations when it comes to sexual education and the kids are having conversations when it comes to what identities they'd like to have and the kids are having the conversation when it comes to emotional intelligence and that unfortunately we're currently in a dynamic where a lot of parents aren't learning education when it comes to emotional intelligence. A lot of parent a lot of parents aren't learning the education when it comes to what should we know as a parent and what should we be concerned of when it comes to our children making these decisions and how important these crucial things are, especially in today's age where there's so much freedom of choice and not to move the goalposts, but there's a lot of kids who are starting this process at the age of 16 and how this is playing out in their lives. Lynn, being someone who they themselves is going through a transition, told me about the importance of their journey coming from Florida, finding that freedom, making choices, going through the process and how important it is to have the correct community of people around them that not only supports the decisions that they're making, but also understand who they are and why they're making this deci these decisions and how there's a certain amount of body dysphoria that comes with that as you're making these decisions and becoming who you've always wanted to be. Now, as we backtrack and we go to Valentine's Day and everything that's happened within Valentine's Day, Lynn told me something about primary and secondary trauma, which I thought was very interesting, which I feel ties into the culture of Valentine's Day and what we see and the people's need, not for acknowledgement, but for the, when will I one day have the same thing that you can have and when will it be my turn? Primary trauma refers to the direct reference of the main person that is going through the trauma. Secondary trauma, on the other hand, refers to the experience that someone is watching a person go through that they experience second-handedly. So, for example, someone's mother passes away and you feel pain for them because of their situation or empathy for them because of their situation and you can relate to them. Now, turning the corner back to the kids when it comes to the school system and what's going on with them and the community that they're being built and integrated into in terms of their classmates and people around them, in the education system, especially what Lynn is working on the episode is uh, education and mental health on uh, Juice Jones Creates channel, Mental Health Monday, episode 60, if I'm not mistaken. They're talking about how a lot of kids are trauma bonding and the trauma bonding is coming from these primary and secondary trauma experiences that the kids are working together in order to have each other's backs, but there's not enough tutelage or enough direction, enough direction in terms of, okay, now that we have gotten close through trauma bonding and now that we have grown these bonds through the trauma itself, what is the next steps for us? To the Valentine's Day breakdown and what the next steps usually are after valentine's day i'm not sure if you guys know this but when it comes to the industry itself a lot of money is spent you have valentine's day especially this year it was valentine's day the thursday that followed the three-day weekend going into president's day and that easily turns everything into a five-day weekend and in the five-day weekend you can see across the nation a 20 percent boost of the amount of money that's made and this amount of money that's made is spent on Retail therapy. Why does retail therapy matter? Retail therapy involves folks making purchases in order to improve their mood and alleviate their stress. Scheme and a marketing monster from basically the 1st of January to present that love is in the air. For everybody that's not able to find love or have something that they can focus on, it is. it really becomes a community of when is it my turn? It becomes a community of, okay, if I can't find love, then I need to buy as much as I can to at least feel good about where I am and what's going on. And that in and of itself sometimes turn into a primary trauma and a secondary trauma. I've been single for years and I'm such a catch. Why haven't I been able to connect with anyone? 
I have all these friends and I'm a good person. When is it going to be my turn? I've done so much in life and so much good work. Why am I waiting for the right thing or the right person or the right moment to come? And within that, the community of people have to come around these people. I tend to question in terms of the education of what's going on with the kids and the education of the next and current generation in terms of us and how we deal with love, how we deal with loss, how we deal with our bonds. I sometimes question, are we doing the right thing to meet each other where we are? And what does that look like in terms of truly understanding each other and not just taking it to three to four days of a bonanza of money being spent and what can we do for the neighbors beside us? Within Lynn's experience of teaching the kids emotional intelligence, how to grapple with their emotions, how to work as a group to come to a solution, and how to figure out the next action items to not only create community, but to create stronger bonds, we're now running into a problem where not only are the parents don't have the language, but parents aren't willing to learn what's necessary. And a lot of that does bleed over into a lot of what we may see after Valentine's Day. It may sound like a stretch and a reach, but love and frustration aren't that far apart from each other. And when it comes to a community or when it comes to being friends with folks, sometimes you have to question. As an adult, once you grow up, are you still willing to learn something new and apply that to yourself and look at the environment around you and figure out, is this the right place for me or my child or the people around me or the things that I may not have? And what does it look like to really not deal with the situation or the frustration? But how do we create answer for those who aren't getting what they deserve or they feel is their right to have at this point in their lives and their journey? So my partner and I, we've been together for about four years. And one of my friends a couple of days ago asked me, when we talk, you call your partner your partner. Why do you call your partner your partner? I came to the realization when it came to the content that we've been creating for Get Home Safe and the spaces and the people that we serve, that there were a lot of trans folks that our services have been helping out in terms of getting people therapy, getting folks the help that they need, or sitting down with people and just being an open ear to chat if they need be, or me stepping in directly and just sitting down with them and seeing, well, what's the next steps for us? During this time, I realized that there was a certain amount of language that me as a straight black man wasn't really accustomed to using. Like, for someone who's my significant other outside of girlfriend or her calling me her boyfriend, just call him partner. The reason this is significant is when it comes to language, words mean things. And I use a lot of words, especially when it comes to public speaking, especially when it comes to fitting in, when it comes to mental health and wellness and the events that we do, especially when it comes to how do you make a difference in someone's life. And sometimes making a difference isn't just delivering the deliverables sometimes making a difference in someone's life is showing them that within your actions you really do stand for that community and you stand to make a difference outside of the service how do you really build the relationship between them in order to figure out how to build the relationship between them i had challenged myself to use the word partner for every single time i refer to my significant other and i see i was testing myself and my beliefs to see do I really believe in this community that I'm helping or is everything just in order for clicks and likes? What I found was there was more pushback from the people around me in terms of how I should delegate the person that's my significant other and why I was calling them certain things and less of a focus on why were people uncomfortable with that language. There was less of a focus on and it opened up a discussion for people to also realize that even though what I did was intentional, it was a habit that I built up to the point that I didn't think about it. And then it became more so when people would question me about it, that's when we would have a discussion of whether I say it's my significant other or I say it's my girlfriend or I say she's my partner. What difference does it make if you know the person I'm referring to is someone who's back that I have and our relationship is close and those are the only two things that matter. When it comes to the class that Lynn is teaching and when it comes to the next generation of kids that are coming and they will be coming soon because the next generation always shows up. What they're working on is not only instilling emotional intelligence, but they're working on what kind of future will these kids have? Will these relationships run into when they're older and 
Are we giving the children the proper tools to take care of themselves as adults and recognize what they do and do not deserve and what it looks like to actually stand by me? When it comes to the adults that's within our generation right now, when it comes to dating, when it comes to Valentine's Day, when it comes to the three day weekends, when it comes to blowing off steam. I wonder if the tools that the kids have now will transfer to the adults that are older when they're able to listen and folks are able to see eye to eye, hopefully. Will that make a difference in those people's lives or will these tools be ignored and the next generation will be the ones that will benefit from the blessing and the gifts that we're able to give them up to this point? And my travel when it comes to the work that we've done with Get Home Safe, when it comes to about the five to six years of work that we've done from 2019 to 2023, well, 2024, when I do the count on that, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, six years, when you're six years deep, when it comes to all these public speaking events that we do, when it comes to these people that we're verbally giving advice to, when it comes to the people that we reach out to to make sure they're a good fit for the mental health events that we do and the wellness events that we do, it still comes back to if I'm not a good communicator of the message or a good communicator of the things that we're speaking on and a good, good enough communicator to ask the questions on what I don't understand, especially as this next generation is coming, I always test myself and I think to myself, if you're not a good communicator, they're not going to be able to believe you. If you don't do the research, they're not going to be able to see you. And if you don't have a good understanding on what you're speaking on or asking the questions before it becomes an emergency or before it becomes a concern, were you really thinking about the thing that you need to do next when it comes to the management of what we're doing, what we're delivering and what community looks like for us next? So when it comes to the work that we do, will there be a lot more trans voices on the platform? Yeah. Where there'll be a lot more black voices on the platform, yes. Where there'll be a, a lot more voices from folks who are of other countries, other descents, and other hues, because those experiences and as those experiences and those stories are what add to the platform. Definitely, doing that sit down with my guy Brad when it came to therapy, when it came to the people that saved him, when it came to his family, when it came to him talking about his pets, when it came to the therapist who he may have dated, not gotten services from, but dated by how that made. A difference in his life that's a real story when it comes to Lynn and them sitting down with the children and educating them and making sure that just because you're on a certain program that doesn't mean make you lesser than are these opinions important definitely not even a question when it comes to my observations and what I'm seeing when it comes to Valentine's Day knowing that spring is coming so it's gonna be a new start for a lot of people April's coming so it's gonna be a lot of folks preparing for the summertime when it comes to June, July, August, every single month and all the work that I'm going to be doing with Britt and the rest of the fellows when it comes to the mental health and wellness, a lot of these things are important because looking back at all the work that we're doing every time I do an interview, it's a chance for me to sit down and learn more about someone. When it comes to In My Shoes, it's a chance for me to hear someone's story in a capacity that I've never heard of it before. And when it comes to observations, it not only adds to my perspective, but it shows me the other lens that I never got to see from the position of a person who's helping versus the position of someone who's serving so when it comes to the platform and when it comes to housekeeping or what we're doing right now the reason housekeeping is so important and the reason i i go through these notes and i consolidate it in order to let everybody know about what's going on and what this re week in terms of the week the recap is and what we're looking to go forward with it's very important to understand it's not about how you start it's not about how you finish but it's understanding that the finish is where everything starts and looking back is the only way for you to figure out how things need to be started correctly so it's your boy juice jones from get home safe this is another episode of housekeeping this is uh, definitely a series i'm probably going to be pushing to doing bi-weekly because there's so much work so many edits and so many things that i have to handle and appreciate you guys uh, appreciate you guys for pulling up like comment subscribe i know i'm saying this at the end so that's kind of crazy but like comment subscribe whenever you get a chance and uh be sure to send me an email if you have any questions or concerns about events we have going on in dc hit the link with the website we have uh stuff for folks to contact us from now on and just know this coming march we're going to have a lot of events going on and we're going to be serving a lot of people outside of the public speaking events that we're doing and i'm going to be working with a bunch of really great people when it comes to the wellness space the mental health space and just space in general I'm putting things together because I just I want folks to feel something that's valid, especially within their experience. So this has been your boy Juice Jones from Get Home Safe. Peace.